I guess, hey, <laughs> it's a deal here. Hey, just got through a run this morning, and uh, you know what? Every single time I go running, it's pretty much comfortably uncomfortable. But you know what? I do it because I know what the benefits will be later on in my day. Listen, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. You know, one of the things I'm real proud of that I really enjoy the most about running is in this new neighborhood that I moved in a year ago. I get to meet new people. I never know. They come outside and they see me jogging forward. They see me jogging backwards. And then week after week, there's a different person that says something. You know what? I get to minister to them in some way, shape, form, or fashion by just smiling, talking, introducing myself. And you know, throughout life, many of us, have these moments when we know as Christians we're supposed to uh, share the love of Christ with others, but we don't know how to. But sometimes you can do it in a smile. You can do it with a wave. You can do it with silence, but a nod. You know what I mean? Or a hand, you know, a thumbs up. Listen, I want to say this. And I want all of you to understand this. We don't belong to each other. It seems like every time I open up Facebook or social media, there's somebody trying to pull someone to this side or the other. But you know what? We don't belong to each other. We belong to the Lord. And we have to let the Lord have his way. All right, see, the reason I personally have empathy and sympathy in regards for people who are lost is because being a follower of Jesus Christ, it tells me in his word that while we were yet sinners, you with me? Christ died on the cross. The Bible tells me that I am to love people regardless of where they're at, not shame them, which I see people doing all day long. And you know who I see shaming people? Christians. I realize that sinners are going to do it. I, because, listen, right now, they're in a world of sin. But Christ calls us to love people as Christ loved the church. But see, the church has to be in us. We're the church, okay? But he died for us while we were yet sinners. Now, what I can't understand is why is it so hard for Christians to love other people who are doing all types of things that you and I, who are now... Uh, cognizant of what we're doing when we were living, you know, prior to living a life of sin, why do we look down on them versus praying for them? You know, using words of, of uh, encouragement to help other Christians join together in just prayer. Listen, I've been training, working with kids and families and communities for 30 years now. <laughs> I've been a, a, a sinner. That means I woke up and I knew that what I had on my mind for the day was wrong. And you know what? There are some things I did long enough and I had to pay for it. And then there's others when God says, hey, you know what? You know that's wrong. The Holy Spirit that was already in me because I had once accepted Jesus. Once you accept Jesus, he's there. Holy Spirit is there. So he's going to tug on that heart. But he gave me a desire to at least know, man, that's wrong. Don't do that. Now it's my choice. To either do it or don't okay but on the other side of that coin are those who have been strengthened they're no longer babies uh in the uh you know in the life of follow, uh, following christ they're, they're mature christians but i i continue to see mature christians lose their way listen if somebody wants to be a democrat a republican an independent let them be I just pray that the light of Christ, wherever they are, is abiding in them. Because listen, wherever there's darkness, there needs to be light. So you go where there's light. Everywhere I go, I choose to be the light of Christ. I choose to be that lamp that's set on top of that table. I choose to be that lamp or that light that's on that hill. That's my choice. I love people. I love the color red. I love the color white. I love the color blue. I love the color green. And I will use them freely. But what's in my heart is the love of Jesus. So when you're trying to figure out where I stand, I stand on the rock. <laughs> I stand on that 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 that, that cornerstone uh, 
uh, that, that, that the builders uh, uh, wanted to throw away. And that's that, that, that cornerstone that, that has the name of Jesus on it and Jesus only. Listen, this world, our economy, race relations, uh, personal relationships, family values, listen, it's all on the ballot this year. But the first ballot needs to be the one that's in your heart. Who are you going to represent when there's a harvest filled with all types of uh, troubles that those who love the Lord can help resolve through being empathetic, being sympathetic, being compassionate towards? Listen, when you become a faithful follower of Christ and you get yourself together, you and I are called to reach back and help those who are lost come forward. Not sit on the sideline and cheer for your own side. I'll tell you this, <laughs> being called into the youth sports ministry, it is not easy because people want to make you out to be theirs. Well, I don't belong to people and you don't either. We belong to the Lord. And you know what? He adopted us. He says, while we were yet sinners, we were lost. <laughs> God came down from heaven, and he, through the birth of the Holy Spirit into Mary, he became a living soul, just like you and I. And he came to save those who were lost. And when you read the New Testament, most of it is already written by Paul who was once Saul, who got converted. He was killing people, and he knew the Bible. And I see a lot of Christians today, they know the Bible. They've been so squeaky clean, so to speak, but they're really Sadducees and uh, Pharisees. And you have to be careful not to follow them, get on their bandwagon. They don't want to get their hands dirty. Well, I want you to join me in getting your hands dirty. People of all races, colors, we're all the same, man, in the eyes of the Lord. We're his children. He doesn't have any grandchildren. And it's time for us to learn to love each other unconditionally. And you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. Because I'll tell you, every day that I wake up and God puts something on my heart to share with you, it is comfortably uncomfortable. I don't know where people are, but all i got to do is continue to say, you know, God, I trust you. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to be faithful. You called me. You chose me. And I said yes. So I can't care about or worry about who likes me and who doesn't. But I love people. My mother told me. Don't ever forget where you came from. And I'm going to tell you, don't you forget where you came from either. Continue to love your mom, your dad, your loved ones. Even those right now, you may have siblings who are wayward. That's normal. But we are called to love them. You don't have to like their sins, but you still have to love them. We've seen people bash, you know, a building. We've seen them turn cards over. We've seen them do a whole bunch of things. But what are we called to do? We are called to not like the sin, but we still have to love them. And you know what? Love supersedes all sins. And if we can get our country back on track, at least the, the Christian uh, family, to start loving people where they're at and just kneeling before the Lord and praying to him to give us the strength, all right, the fortitude, the knowledge, the, understand, the understanding uh, for what we can do to help these situations. I believe that there will be a change that will come all over this world because we chose to submit all those things to the Lord. Listen, I'm not perfect and neither are you. But what I want is I want all of us to learn how to love others just as Jesus came and he loved the church. And again, if you don't learn anything else from me this morning, he loved the church so much that he died. He shed his blood on Calvary for the sins, all of the sins of man. Now, we've got some people today that are still doing things that are unfathomable to me. But I cannot sit here and join you and you and you and you and you in talking about them and putting them down and talking about what they're not or what they are. Because that's not what Jesus would have done. And I think it takes guts and courage to follow Christ. And there's no sides. It's the word. You live by the word. And you may have to lose some friendships because 
We live in a society that wants, everybody wants to join forces with each other, then basically live out their life honoring the true living word of God. So join me and do it. So I love you and God bless you. Together we all stand. United we stand. Divided we fall. Get rid of the red, the blue, the white, the yellow, the brown, and replace it with the love of Jesus.